You know, it's going to be wonderful in our glorified body when we can't get tired. Not only won't, but we can't get tired. And I praise the Lord, that's going to be a wonderful time. As I, I'm looking forward to just bowing at Jesus' feet and worshiping Him and praising Him. Sister Lavinia Ballou is coming to sing, and I just love this lady and love her singing and ministering song. I have known her for at least 50 years. She may have been two years old. I don't know, but I've been knowing her about 50 years. And she's a wonderful, godly Christian lady, and she has sang in a group for 50 plus years. She used to sing with the Murray Trio, and they are wonderful. So Sister Lavinia, come and obey the Lord. Let God use you. Just obey the Lord. since I sung this song or it's been a long time since I've sung by myself but uh, it never grows old to me I, li I like to sing I've done it all my life and uh, but you know after you get older there's a lot of younger people that can bypass you and you sort of you know <laughs> but pray for me I love this song one day I was lost and I was blind I had no hope in this world and uh, I was not famous and I was not well known. I was not well educated, but I knew God. I knew about God. But when he came into my heart and opened up my eyes to what sin really is and what Christ can do when he changes your heart. And that gave me hope to go through this world serving him. And that's been my desire. I'm singing when I met the master. Like a babe when it cries for its mother
the master now I am one of his own for now I am one of his own different than what we usually do uh, we're gonna need you guys to clap along with us on this one we're kind of going old school <laughs> Just follow our beat. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full, that your joy may be this is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be full. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with a voice of praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Praise Him, praise Him, shout unto God with a voice of praise. Clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with a voice of praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Praise Him, praise Him, shout unto God. With the voice of praise. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up an old well within my soul. Spring up an old well and make me whole. Spring up an old well and give to me. Abundantly. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Now part two takes it takes it back to this century. <laughs> Yeah. 
Can anybody tell me what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is thy flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood thank you group whatever your name is we know who they are we just don't know what the name is and we praise the Lord for what God is doing, raising up groups in the church, singers. I appreciate Sister Blue singing. It's wonderful. I love that song. We want April to come around and just obey the Lord and let God use her to speak whatever he's going to speak through her. And she's the conduit that the Lord will flow through. And just let God have his way tonight. Obey the Lord. Looks like she's got a bag of goodies here. Well, praise the Lord. How many of you are here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Amen. Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. And all the time. God's good. Amen. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. He's already welcome in this place. We know that. Yes. But let's just hear from him tonight. Amen. Let's just open up our hearts and our ears, our eyes to hear from him. If you would just, let's just all pray tonight. Father. Dear God, I just thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, we know that you are here. God, we can feel your presence already, God. And we know, God, that, that you have a word for your people. Lord, I pray that you would open up your, your, your children's ears and your eyes, God, their eyes, Lord. God, help us to hear from you tonight, God, and move in this place in a way that you have chosen to move, God. Lord, this is your service. And Lord, we just praise you and worship you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God gave me a message. And the title is, It's Time to Rise Up Out of the Ashes. Amen. Time to rise up out of the ashes. And I want to start in the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. It says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, verse 2, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So we're going to be talking about Ezra tonight and how he was commanded to build a house at Jerusalem. So the first thing, though, that they did before they built anything was they built an altar. Yes. They had an altar. And in Ezra chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, and verse 6, it says, And when the seventh month had come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltil, and his brethren arose and built the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Though fear had come upon them because of the people of those countries, they set the altar on its bases, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and evening burnt offerings. And I'm going to skip down to verse 6. And it said, From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, although the foundation of the temple of the Lord had not been laid. 
So tonight we're talking about ashes, rising up from the ashes. And I'm sure you all know what ashes are. That is the leftovers, the dead remains of what's been burned. Yes. And so, first of all, there's some things we have to go through before we can ever get to the ashes. First, we have to build an altar yes. and put that altar out. And in verse 1, I want to go back up to that one. It says, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. So they all came with a common desire to worship God. Yes. Hallelujah. There is something about when you come together, yes. corporately unity, yes. and, and you come together to worship God with one purpose, to just worship Him. God can move in ways that that is unimaginable to us. God can touch and flow. I mean, there is no limit to what God can do when we were in one mind and one accord. So they came with a common desire to worship God. So after they've got, they're prepared to have their burnt offerings, then they bring the sacrifice. They all, that you have to have a sacrifice. Yeah. So what are you going to sacrifice on the altar? You see, God is calling his people yes. to a place they've never been. Yes. It starts with surrendering all to him yes. and a sacrificing of this flesh. Yes. Yes. When you build a fire, the remains don't look the same because you only have the ashes. All of you know that if you have wood or whatever you have, it's, it's a piece of wood. It's a log or whatever. But when that is burnt, it no longer looks the same. It's just the ashes that are left, the remains, the dead remains of what's left. They could go to the altar and see where their sacrifice once was because of the ashes. Some of you have gotten rid of things and had things cleaned out by God. Maybe you've had junk in your life that needed to be gone. And that junk has no problem remaining there as long as we allow it to take up space in our lives. But you see, God doesn't want that junk left in us. He wants a pure and holy and undefiled child of God. He wants you to be risen up from the ashes that you don't have anything of yourself anymore. That it's nothing about you. That there's no flesh left. But it's all God. That God just wants to cleanse us and purify us and make us holy unto him. Yes, amen. The longer it's there, the more space it takes up. And then you may not even realize what an impact it actually has on your life. Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This scripture tells us that God wants us to present ourselves a living sacrifice living holy and acceptable unto God yes. God wants us the one thing that we love to hold on to is us right we like us you, you like yourself right for the most part you like yourself you like to do things your way right amen anybody or do you just like to do what somebody else always does all the time? You just follow somebody around. Here we go. Or do you like to just be in charge sometimes? You know, you like yourself. You like you. So we, we like to do it our way sometimes, right? Amen? Teenagers, y'all like to do things your way, yes? Because you know more than your parents right now, right? Yes, they do. But eventually the parents will come back and know more than them. That's how the world works. <laughs> so, But we can continue 
to live like this. Or we can say, here I am, Lord. I am yours. Take all of me. Take this flesh. Take this attitude. Take this junk. Whatever it is that keeps me from being all you have called me to be. And make me who you want, Lord. God can do so much more with us when we are willing to say, God, I submit to you. Fulfill your purpose in me. So when they, I want to go back to Ezra, when they offered that sacrifice before the temple was built, and we know it was built in the same place, in Ezra chapter 6, verse 15 and 16, it says, Now the temple was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the children of Israel, the priests, and the Levites, and the rest of the descendants of the captivity celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. The children of Israel, the priests, and the Levites, and the rest of the descendants celebrated. You see, when you come up out of the ashes, there is something to praise God for. God is helping you to have purpose once again. And that is something to shout about. Amen. That's something to praise God for because he's bringing you out of the dead remains and the foundation must be all about him, must be for him. We have a firm foundation in Christ if we belong to him. God's got something greater, but we must be willing to be that sacrifice and to lay ourselves on the altar. You know, you can step back into the ashes and come in, come out like you went in. And some do, because the enemy is wanting to keep you in the ashes. Even though you come to the altar or you go in your prayer time or wherever you are and and you have that communion with God. And I'm talking you lay everything out on the altar. Kind of like the pastor was talking this morning. How he loves to just get along with God and it's just him and the Lord. That's the kind of sacrifice I'm talking about. When it's just you and your father and you can talk to him and he will love on you and you can love on him and you can lay everything out on the altar and you can tell him every fault. You can tell him everything that you need to tell him and he's going to hear you and he already knows anyway. But you know what? When it's children come don't you know that the father begins to smile oh he begins to smile I can just imagine that when the children begin to come just like your children and and others that they come and oh here comes one of my children to spend time with me here they come they're coming just because just because they want to spend time with me yes But how many times do we lay everything out on the altar and then the enemy tries to come and and push us back into that place, that dead place, back into the ashes, the ashes of deception. Because many are deceived into thinking they can live any way they want to. Even in the church world, we're seeing it more and more every day that that people can think they can live the way they want to, they can do what they want to, and they're okay. Because as long as they come to church and they shout the little victory on Sunday, then they're okay. But I want to tell you that it is time we stand up and say, it is not okay. It is not all right to live any way you want to through the week and think you can shout the victory on Sunday. We have got to get back to holy living to where we are holy and righteous before the king of kings and the lord of lords because on a monday when we get up we're the same as we were on a sunday and tuesday comes along and we're the same as we were on a sunday and wednesday and thursday and whatever comes our way that we are still the same we are still in love with our savior and nothing is going to change that Amen. 
deceive you and you begin to entertain those thoughts such as you'll never come out of that you'll never get over it you might as well quit trying you see this you did that's what came of it you'll never have a closeness with God again you can't live for God like you need to you'll just fail him again you've been in the ashes too long but it is time to rise up out of the ashes child of God and be who God has called you to be you see God is calling you out and you've tried you've tried it your way and if you continue to keep trying it your way it's going to end up destroying you but when you get yourself out of the way and you say God it's all about you it's not about me it's none of me it's all of you God then he can take you take that old flesh and do what he wants to and cleanse you and purify you and make you holy like he desires for you to be God is calling his people to a place that you have never been but it starts with surrendering your all to him and a sacrifice yes. and if that's not enough the enemy will try to push you into the ashes of destruction. First of all, it was deception. Many of the church world is deceived. Many of the world is deceived. And then he tries to destroy. He wants to destroy you. The ashes can remind you of the fire that you once had. What used to be. How many times do we allow the enemy to remind us of how we used to be on fire for God? And we hear, you'll never get that back again. You'll never be that close again. You'll never get back to that place. God doesn't just want you to be that close. He wants to draw you closer than you've ever been. Yes, he does. For whatever reason, the fire you once had is no longer there. All you have is the memory. But that's only temporary. Because it's time to rise up out of the ashes. You might want to pray something like this. This may be your prayer. God, I know you used to use me. I used to have a fire in me, but it's gone. Things got in the way, and I let the fire die. But God, I'm not satisfied anymore. I'm always looking to fill the void, and nothing takes the place of you, God because I'm always left empty. But tonight, God, I want the fire rekindled in my life once again. I want to rise up out of the ashes, God. The ashes that won't die. I want to be drenched in your presence. I want to rise up then sometimes even God will call us back to the ashes. And that's not a pleasant place to be. We don't want to remember the remains, the dead remains. But God has a different reason. He wants to remind you of the promise that he spoke to you. And how he brought you up and out so many times before. Yes. It's time to rise up. When you are reminded of what God has brought you out of, you realize that's a place that you never want to go back to again. Because see, you've been brought out of that place. And when God brings you out of it, you don't want to go back to it. You don't want to be in that place anymore. You want to be totally surrendered to God. Thank you, Jesus. And you may wonder how the rebuilding of the temple relates to all this. I want to read something in my Bible. It 
says, while the people were rebuilding Jerusalem's walls, God was rebuilding their hearts so that they would truly obey and worship him. The restoration of the remnant was a complete restoration. The message for Ezra's day as well as for our own is that the God of Israel is faithful to his promises. He will completely restore his people when they come back to him. So if you're in a dead place tonight, God is calling you. He is calling you back to rise up out of the ashes. God was preparing the place for something greater. And he is doing the same for you. In Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, to give them beauty for ashes, to give them them beauty for ashes the all of joy for mourning did you hear that the all of joy for mourning if you're in a place of mourning if you're in a place of sorrow it says the all of joy do you know what all does it pours out oh it pours there is a joy that's coming your way if you are downhearted there is a joy that's coming your way it's the all of joy for morning. Do you hear what I'm saying? The all just pours out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Let me see if I can finish this scripture. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified and they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. You can stay in the ashes or you can rise. That is the choice. But it is time for this generation to rise up out of the ashes of defeat and discouragement. The enemy wants you defeated. He wants you discouraged. He wants you down. But God is saying, rise up, O oh children of God. Rise up. Oh, children, I have so much more for you. If you will just allow me to work in your life once again, rise up because what you are going through is only temporary. If you will allow me to have complete control, you will see me do the work. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name in case you didn't realize that was the Lord speaking to someone in this place. Yes, amen. Oh, praise your name. Oh, my God. Yes. The ashes seem to have consumed some of you. You've literally laid down in the ashes not realizing you were even there. As I was preparing this message, it's as if I could see someone. I could literally see them laying almost in a fetal position in the ashes, and they were covered. They were covered in the ashes. It's as if they did not know how to get out. But as the word is going out tonight, yes. something is beginning to happen inside of you. Yes. The ashes are a place that you no longer can remain because God is calling you out tonight yes. to rise up out of the ashes. Yes. And when you rise up, God is giving you power that you haven't felt. Yes. 
There's a shift that's taking place. Yes. The downhearted, oh. the pushing down, the defeat doesn't feel that way anymore. <laughs> because God is calling you up out of the ashes tonight to rise up from where you are. I want you to stand. I know this word has been short. I know it's a short message tonight. But I believe God is calling some of his people Jesus. to rise up out of the ashes. God is calling you to rise up. Oh, men and women of the Most High God, yes. to be the army for Him, yes. to rise up and be and do according to His will. The last thing that I saw after I saw that, that person, this is the exciting part. I saw a person fully clothed in armor yes. standing. Yes. And you know what that meant? That they had risen up out of the ashes. Yes. That that place of low, that low place they had been, no longer had control of them. Yes. No longer had part in their life. And they stood as a mighty warrior for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. wants to minister to some of you tonight. He's calling you out of the ashes. The place where you're at is not where you're going. God has much, much more for you. So much more for you. If you feel like that you are in the ashes tonight, I want you to come up here. And I want God's people to surround you. And I believe that when you leave here tonight, you're not going to be in the ashes anymore. Something's going to take place in your life. You see, when we're in the ashes, sometimes we need someone to say, let me help you up. Let me hold on to you. Let me be here for you. Let me put my arms around you and hug you and tell you how much Jesus loves you. And then that individual becomes strong. Strong enough to stand. Like the individual with a mighty armor of God on. They're no longer allowing the ashes to push them down or to keep them there any longer. But it's time to rise up. Anyone else? Anyone else need prayer tonight? Before we start praying, anyone else? Rise up out of the ashes. 
rise up out of the ashes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to ask y'all to stand if you don't mind. I'm going to ask y'all to stand. And I want some prayer warriors to gather around them. And begin to allow the Lord to pray through you tonight. That he would use you as you join in unity.
I've got to have more, more and more of you. I've got to have more of you. Thank you, Jesus. I've had all, but what I need is more of you. Of things I've had my fear. Jesus. Praise God for this message. Rise up out of the ashes. Hallelujah. Now that's a rich message. So many thoughts came to my spirit and my mind while she was preaching that rise up out of the ashes. I praise God for it. April, thank God for letting God use you. And I praise Him for what God has done in this place tonight and around the world. We bless these people. Before we close, I want us to pray over the internet for the school children and the teachers that God would protect them. I tell you, the devil acts like he don't have any reins on him. He acts like this is a tribulation. The first three and a half years of the trip, well, the last three and a half years of the tribulation. And he acts like you don't have uh, any, anything to control him and stop him. But I want him to and serve notice on him that the church is still here and he does not have free reign. And he can't have free reign till the church is gone. Praise God. Would you pray with me and just point your hand toward this camera? And pray and believe God to minister to protection to our children and the teachers and administrators in the schools. Holy Father, in Jesus' name, we pray against every spirit that would come against our school children, against our administrators, against our teachers and workers in schools and the school system. We pray for our superintendent of school in every state and also locally and the board statewide and locally and over education through the country of the U.S., the United States of America. Lord Jesus, protect and keep them and we speak to that evil. Lord, we speak against the bullies in cyberspace. God, cut them off. Lord, cause our children to be encouraged. Lord, Father, we speak against the spirit of suicide that is trying to be rampant. Suicide, listen to me. Hear me and hear me well. You have no authority over the blood of Jesus. You have no authority over the name of Jesus. You have no authority over the power of Jesus. In Jesus' name, the multitudes that are taking their lives and that don't realize there is hope. Dear Father, we speak hope to them. And it comes from you, Holy Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There is hope in the Lord. And we bless you, Father. Thank you for the hope in you, Lord Jesus. Help them to turn to you and look to you. The hope, the hope of the salvation and the hope in their life. And I praise you for what 
you just did. In the holy name, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is power in prayer. In the name of Jesus. These names here that we pray for every service. There's so much power in prayer that souls are being saved off of this list. They are being saved, and I praise God for it. That's more that the devil don't have. That's for Jesus and his glory, for the kingdom of God, for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I praise God for it and praise him for victory. Does anyone have a testimony right fast before we close out? Anyone else? Let me give you. That I'm covered with the blood of Jesus and I belong to the King of Kings yeah. and the Lord of Lords. Amen. That's wonderful. Praise God. Someone else have a praise for the Lord. You know, if this were your last service, Sister Joyce, it was her last service. But the red hearing, it was his last service. Star, I thought I saw you pointing to somebody. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, I just want to thank the Lord for everything that he's doing for us and um, even assembling this praise band. Uh, he's doing a lot. And, uh, you know, there are attacks coming through all of us, but I praise God that he is victorious and that is through um, in, in us and through us. So I just want to give God all the glory for it. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. Yes, sir. I just want to thank God for the message, first of all. Yes. Yes. But along with the message, that He will reach down into those ashes and create something new, a new life in those ashes, out of those ashes. So yes. He's done it with me. He's done it with each and every one of us that's in this room. Yes. He took those broken things that we once were. Yes. And He burned off all that bad stuff that we had in our lives and He created new life in us. Yes. And so I just want to thank God for not just my life and my new creation that I am in God, but also for everyone else in this room. Because as a, body, as a, as a group together, we are the body of Christ. And that, and that strength that's in Christ is flowing through each and every part of us that are in this room. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God for the beauty from ashes. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah.